Hey guys, Buildzoid here with a progress update on the dead RTX 3090 I got sent. Uh, it is dead no more. It is not healthy, but it dead no more. So, yeah, we can turn it on, um, and it does turn on. And right now I just have like a AMD stock cooler mounted backwards to it <laughs> for, for cooling. This is my preferred test heatsink because we just need to be able to... Like, this is just to make sure that the GPU core doesn't immediately overheat. And in fact, you can run some basic tests with this installed. It takes, like, it's a pretty substantial block of aluminum. It takes a while for it to, to heat it up. Um, and into Windows we go. And NVIDIA drivers are initialized, like, see, NVIDIA control panel. If we open up GPU-Z, give it a second. You know, if we open up GPU-Z, we can see we have an RTX 3090. If we go to the sensors tab, for some reason it's at full speed. Uh, or more like it's at like two and a half D clocks right now, as I think. And for some reason it won't boost, but that might be because I don't have the full heatsink assembly on there. Um, yeah, that might be why, because... Uh, I, I guess, like, I would hope that there might be some kind of safety against that. We can't really run anything more substantial than this, because, again, that's the, the cooling system that I have on there. Like, it won't even sit properly at idle. Um, so maybe I could just open up Afterburner. Might also be something with how this OS is configured. Um, oh, right. Wait. Yeah, because I have GPU-Z in always on top mode. Um, so there's Afterburner. Apply. Nope. Can I underclock the memory? Yes. But, uh... Well, no, we're not going to do that. Card's currently missing a power stage. So, <laughs> we don't really want to do anything, like, super rash to it. Yeah, okay, for whatever reason I can't get it to 3D clocks, I think it's probably down to the fact that there's no heatsink on there, but... Like, we don't have a proper heatsink, and there's no fans, and... Yeah. Um, so I'm not too fussed about that. The main thing is, like... Also, it's it's the ren render test. It might be that the 3090 doesn't spin up for the render test, in, in which case that's kind of annoying. But the primary purpose of the GPU-Z render test is to, che to check that the PCIe link is at full speed, and, like, it is. Um, so, yeah. Also, this is a bench OS, so there might be something weird with the power settings on here. Uh... But yeah, we're at 16x 4.0, um, and so the render test's not really doing much. We're going to shut down because the card otherwise will overheat. Uh, <laughs> it will eventually overheat. Just going to check the temperatures. Yeah, the memory, the top memory chips are currently at 70 degrees, so that's fun because uh, I did want to, we're, we're going to take a look at the card. Um, so I'm going to be burning myself doing that. That's great. Um, so let's turn off the PSU. Um, and, uh, yeah, so this is my choice of heatsink for the card. Ow. Yeah, okay, that wasn't very bright of me. Grab the card by the hottest part. There. So this is the condition the card's in. Um, as you can see, it is missing a power stage and an inductor. The power stage is very dead. Um, so, yeah, what failed on the card was a power stage. There go. The heat sink off of there. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the power stage was really dead. Um, so I removed the dead power stage. Um, right now the card still runs because a lot of VRMs are fully capable of running with missing phases. Um, in this condition you wouldn't really want to run any load on the card, so I still need to buy a replacement power stage and reinstall the dead inductor and put a new power stage on there. Uh, I mean, reinstall the, the inductor. The indu it's, it didn't die. The power stage died. The inductor is completely fine. So I need to reinstall the inductor, reinstall the, the power stage. Um, also a new new input fuse. And uh, yeah, that'll be the card sort of back to fu like fully set up. Um, the one concern I have with this, though, is the, the thing is... 
the card failed in factory new condition, right? Like, the, the owner didn't do anything to the card to make it fail in, in New World. And so, replacing a power stage that blew up with the same model of power stage, because I can't actually get these power stages on DigiKey. Um, yeah, so replacing that power stage with the same power stage again, is it kind of makes me wonder, isn't it just going to blow up again? Like... If there's a design flaw here, it's just going to blow up again. If it was a faulty power stage the first time, then it might be fine this time, but I have my doubts about that. Like, this is a little bit too widespread an issue for it to be, you know, like either Alpha and Omega Semiconductor have absolutely trash uh, component quality assurance, because uh, basically all 30 series cards, especially like... Like the EVGA FTW3s, those use Alpha and, Omega, uh, Alpha and Omega Semiconductor Power Stages. The Gigabyte cards use Alpha and Omega uh, Semiconductor Power Stages. The Zotac cards use Alpha and Omega Power Stages. Uh, the, like, MSI uses those Power Stages. Everybody is using these Power Stages. And so it's kind of like... It, it, so if the power stages were faulty, you would probably hear reports of all 3090s dying somewhat regularly. Um, otherwise, if it's a design flaw, then, you know, it'll be just, like, every time you repair this PCB and then you go to play New World, it's just gonna die again. Um, which just doesn't seem... Like... Like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like, that seems like a really awkward c condition for, for the card to be left in, but... It looks pretty likely that's that's exactly how it's going to end up. Um, at least to me, it seems like that that's a very realistic possibility of just like, yeah, I'm going to replace the blown up power stage. And then it's just going to blow up playing New World again. Um, or maybe some other intensive game. Who knows? You know, in a couple years, we might get another game that puts that much load on a 3090 and blows it up again. So at that point, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what to do about that. Like, the owner did say, you know, if I can repair it, I should. So I'm gonna get the card back into, you know, sort of, like, has all the components that it's supposed to have. Um, but, like, because here's the thing. If somebody sent me, like, a 980 Ti with a failed power stage, I wouldn't bother repairing that VRM because it's just gonna blow up again. Like, that VRM is bad. That's why it blows up. Therefore, repairing it is a waste of freaking time. This right here, I don't know yet. Um, I don't have enough of a sample... Like, I don't have a large enough sample size to know if, like, it's always going to fail again. Like, it's always going to keep failing. Or if, if it'll be fine. So... Yeah, anyway. But for now, the card is operational. It initializes the NVIDIA drivers. Um, I st still... Yeah, I, I just need to get parts for it, which is going to take a couple days. And then... Uh, you know, I'm gonna put it back together, stress test it, and see if, uh, like, and by stress test it, I don't mean running New World on it. <laughs> For one thing, I'm not buying Amazon's game. Um, so, yeah, I'm not gonna not run New World on this. If the owner wants to run New World on it again, then that's on them. That's not my problem. So, if, yeah. But, uh... I'm mostly just going to test it with, like, Fire Strike and Time Spy, um, and Superposition, you know, like, realistic 3D workloads. I I'm also not going to run Furmark on this, because, uh, Furmark is in a, especially with NVIDIA cards, Furmark is in a fun situation of, like, some NVIDIA cards, they detect Furmark, and they just throttle to, like, crazy low clocks, and so you get completely use, like, it's completely useless as a stress test if it's throttling, right? And... Uh, on other cards, it doesn't, like, it doesn't throttle, but it also pulls just insane amounts of power, and it never hits the same kinds of clock speeds that you see, uh, in other, like, more realistic 3D bench, uh, workloads. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, I, like, I just don't use Furmark, because, because it's not a very, like, these days it's not a very good stress test. And then on cards which are quest of questionable build quality to begin with, uh, like, they're either going to have safeties built in, and it's useless as a stress test, or they don't have safeties and they blow up. So, you know, um, that's kind of like, like, that's still not a good stress test. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, I just figured you, you might find it interesting that 
uh, it is possible to to well I want like I wanted to just do a progress update. Card runs again. Um, honestly, it could probably run Fire Strike in this condition. I'm not going to do that though because the last time I tried that on a Nvidia GPU, where I was like, oh, it's still got like seven eighths of the VRM, it should be fine, and then it wasn't fine. <laughs> um, it went from being seven eighths of the VRM to being six eighths of the VRM after I I tried to run Fire Strike on it. So this being nine tenths of the VRM. Uh, we are not going to see if it'll turn into eight tenths um, just yet. So, yeah, anyway, uh, that's it for the video. So, uh, I guess thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comments section below. And if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the HOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. Both Patreon and Teespring help out immensely with running the channel, so it would be much appreciated if you'd check them out. And uh, yeah, that's it for the video. So thanks for watching and goodbye.